A lot of parents I talk to are really interested in introducing strategy board games to their kids, especially their young kids, but they don't know how to get started. So I get questions like, what's the best game to first introduce children to board games? Or how do you explain the rules to children? And that's what this video is all about. So I've structured this video to talk about three things. First, I wanna talk about the stages that a child goes through when they're learning uh, how to play more in-depth strategic games. And then I'm going to talk about a specific game that I think is an excellent example to get kids started. And then finally, I'm going to model for you how to teach the rules uh, to your child so that they will be motivated to play the game all the way through to the end. So to start things off, let's talk about what a child goes through when they're learning how to play games. Now, I'm talking about a child who may be only three or four years old. So there's a lot going on in their young little minds. And the first thing that you need to know, and I cannot stress this enough, is you do not need to worry if it seems like they're not getting it initially because they are definitely getting something. It's just that they need to go from one stage of understanding to the next. So for example, the very first thing that your child is going to learn and understand is that a game is really a structured play activity. You're introducing the structure of taking turns. I take a turn and, and I get to use this toy and then you get a turn and get to use this toy. Now the games that do a great job of explaining that structure to children or you know delivering that lesson are any games that give a direct reward immediately after the turn. So I take a turn and then I get something. And then you take a turn and you get something. So if your child is really young and you're trying to play a game with them and you can tell that they're struggling with just the structure, then just coast with that for a while. Just structured play. My turn, your turn, etc. Eventually they'll get it. And you can move on to the next thing, which is really understanding the rules or understanding the effect of a game. Basically what the child is acquiring is this understanding and an acceptance of abstract rules, these laws of gameplay. You can't just do whatever you want and move around the board however, but you have to follow some sort of rule set. Now from my experience, the best way to teach rules is through theme. If the game has a story to it, and if the story has some sort of explanation for why one thing leads to another, the child is really going to pick up this lesson. And they move on to the next thing. And so the next piece is an objective. Understanding that the purpose of the game is to accomplish one objective. Now, when kids are very young, I find that more concrete or event driven objectives, such as winning a race, being the first to do something, is easier to understand than an objective where it's just getting the most amount of points. Points, numerical value is much more of an abstraction for a child, whereas being the first to do something is an event that they can recognize and is a lot more meaning to them. And so you may find that as you're playing with a, uh, with a child, if they understand the structure, and if they understand the story of the game, they may just enjoy doing what they do because it's fun in itself. Like, an example is a game called Calico, which is a quilt building and cat collecting game. Now, there are a lot of objectives and there are points that you can earn during the game, and really, my youngest daughter doesn't care because she likes building a quilt and getting cats, and that is in itself rewarding. So there's no reason to be frustrated because your child isn't trying to pursue a, a winning strategy. They just need to have fun. When all of these things come together, you start playing a game. So the next topic is what is a great game to accomplish all of these things? For that, my recommendation today is Baron Park. So we're going to talk about how to play Baron Park in just a minute. Before we do that, let's talk about why this is a great model for accomplishing these three things. So first, it's a turn-taking game, and at the end of every single turn, you are going to get something. You're going to get a tile as a reward for what you've accomplished on your turn. So that's going to help reinforce the uh, understanding of the structure of the game. 
And then the next thing about the rules, this is a tile placing game. And the rules are very easy to understand because the whole purpose of the game is to fill your zoo with tiles. And the tiles are bears. So really what you're trying to do is build uh, enclosures for the bears to be in your zoo. It's very intuitive and you'll know that you've violated a rule if the bear or if the enclosure doesn't fit inside the zoo. And then lastly, the objective of the game can have different levels depending on how you want to play it. So with children, I would keep the objective very simple and try to be the first player to fill your zoo with bears. There are other things where you can have victory points and objectives and, and much more that you can do once you get to that point. But initially, the first player to fill their zoo with bears will be the winner. So let's talk about how to play Baron Park. So as I explain the rules to Baron Park, I am going to use a digital version of the game. This is from Board Game Arena. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because this, I think, is an excellent example of a game to introduce to young children, but it is not a game that I own. And the reason that I don't own it is because my kids are a little bit older now, and we play some similar games that are just a little bit more complicated, um, so I don't want another tile-placing game. But when I learned about this game, I, I just really thought that this was an excellent recommendation for young kids. So I wanted to use this game even though I don't own it. I'm going to use the digital version and I think it'll be just as easy to follow along. But if you would like to buy a copy of the game, I will leave a link in the description. That is an affiliate link, so it does help support my channel and, uh, and it'll be through Amazon if you want to take a look. So as I teach these rules, I'm going to do this in a way as if I was teaching a child in order to model for you how to teach this game to your children. So, let's go ahead. In this game, we're gonna be making really cool zoos with bears in them. See, these are all the bears over here and we have to put them into our zoo. So, this is your zoo and this is my zoo and when we play this game, we get to make our zoos bigger and bigger. So these tiles over here are what we get to add to our zoo, like this, right? Okay, so if we wanna make our zoo bigger, do you know what we're gonna need? We're gonna need workmen who are gonna come to the zoo and build on it. You see any workmen on your zoo? Right there, right? So, if we can get that, we can make our zoo bigger. Hmm. But there's something missing in this zoo, isn't there? What do we need in the zoo? We don't have any animals, yeah. We need to build cages for the animals. So you know how we're gonna do that? We got to use our trucks and our equipment. So we've got a wheelbarrow here. That'll help us build these cages. And then we've got our cement truck here. That'll help us build these cages. And then finally, we have our red digger right here. And it helps us build the biggest cages over here. So let's try this out right now. Here's the first tile that you get to put inside your zoo. And where do you want it to go? Do you want to go on a wheelbarrow so that you can build something like this? Or do you want it to go on a cement truck so you can build one of these enclosures for bears? Or should we put it on the workmen so we can make our zoo bigger? How about we put it on the cement truck? Okay, so we put it on the cement truck. So which bears do you want? Okay. If you want that one, you hold on to it because it's my turn to pig figure out where I want to put my tile. Hmm. I want the wheelbarrow. So I'm going to take my tile here and I'm going to take a wheelbarrow. I'm going to take a hot dog stand. All right. Now it's your turn. So I'm going to stop there for now. I think I've delivered my point, but let's talk about what it is that I'm doing that's a little different. First of all, I'm not going through the rule book. I'm using the story of Baron Park to explain all of the rules. So it's not like on a player's turn, a, tur a player can do one of the following. It's I have a tile, how does the, the, the world of Baron Park help me continue with the game? And why do I want to do this? I want to do this so I can get bears into my zoo. I'm also not going to go through all of the rules of like, you know, how tiles need to be placed and if they go 
outside of the zoo and have to be touching and not kitty corner. There's a lot of there's a lot more rules about how tiles need to be placed and it doesn't matter because it's all too specific for a child anyway. If you're teaching them the rules, just teach them by playing it. And if a child puts a tile in such a way that it's illegal, let's suppose the tile goes outside of the the square of your zoo, then you can just say, oh, we can't put the tile like that. Do you know why? Do you know why we can't do that? And they'll figure it out like, oh, because it's not inside the zoo. A lot of these, these games, if they have intuitive rules that just make sense, there's no reason to explain it to children. They just pick it up. Now, another thing I'm doing in my explanation is I'm not explaining the strategy. I'm not explaining how you may want to place a tile one way and not another way because, you know, the strategic implications because, again, it doesn't matter. Initially, this is a toy for them. They need to understand that on their turn, they get to place a tile. The reward for placing a tile is to get another tile and the effect of placing that tile depends on where the tile lands. If it's a wheelbarrow, if it's a cement truck, or if it's a red digger. So when they understand that, everything else is going to fall into place. They will soon realize that leaving little corners on the side of your board that are difficult to fill is, means that they don't get to place a bear there. The bear won't fit. You have to place a little porta potty. And just by nature of the fact that you can either place a porta potty or a bear, the kid's going to want to place a bear. They, 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 they can get this on their own. So you don't want to you don't want to overexplain. You don't want to talk down to the kid either or try to explain how they should play in order to win. Let them discover this on their own. It's more rewarding for them. They'll actually pick it up faster and you'll have more fun. And then the last thing that I think you should know is of course as you're playing, you certainly want to uh, recognize what your child is doing and, and you know, wow, you know that's that's excellent. You've got the panda bear. That's so cool. Or um Oh wow, look at you got that tile and it has a red digger on it. That's going to be an excellent tile. Great job. Like help them understand that what they're doing is the right way to play. It definitely has a bigger impact when you get excited about doing it right than if you try to explain why they're doing something wrong. And they're going to want to play more if playing with you means that it's going to be exciting and not you know, they're going to be constantly corrected. So big ideas one more time. Don't worry if it feels like they're not getting it. They're going to be at some stage of understanding. Just write it out and they will eventually get to the next level. Don't over teach or over correct and get excited when the game is being played properly. Keep it a positive experience. They'll want to play more and they'll want to play it out to the end. So that's how I started with my kids. Of course, I started when KK was about three. That's about three years ago now. And so they've come a really long way. I'm playing really complicated things with them these days. But Baron Park, I think, is an excellent game to get started. And I got to say, it's not even a kid's game necessarily. This is a great game if you're playing with adults. So I think it's why it's a really great buy. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.